Once you have finished your project and you've layered it up, you then have a choice of either quilting by hand or quilting by machine. So for this video, I'm going to give you my tips on how to hand quilt. So we're looking at actually hand quilting. So this is all hand quilting is. It's a means of holding your three layers together, which is your top fabric, your wadding, and your backing fabric. And for this demonstration, I'm using the Vlizzeline 279 cotton mix wadding. Now, as you can see, it's simply a running stitch and that's all the quilting is. How intricate the patterns that you create is entirely up to yourself. And usually we give a guideline and that is dependent on which wadding that you're using. Um, and you can check out on the videos as to the maximum distance for the spacing between your stitches. Now, to achieve this, you need a couple of things. The first is a needle. Now, if you notice, the quilting needles are considerably shorter than your regular sharps needles. And that's simply because when you are doing the quilting action, you, it's a rocking action. You want the stitches to appear on the reverse of your work as well as on the front. So think about needles. Whilst you can buy specific quilting needles, whatever you're happy with, just go with that. I tend to use either a size 10 or a size 12. And remember with a needle, the larger the number, the bigger the number, the smaller the needle tends to be. But there is absolutely no reason why you can't achieve a lovely quilting stitch with a larger needle. The next thing to consider is your thread. And again, I don't think there's a huge amount of rules with the thread. This one is a specific um, quilting thread so it's been pre-glazed and it just allows the thread to run through the fabric very easily. I also regularly use a normal cotton thread and of course you can always run your thread through beeswax just to make it smooth and travel through your fabric without any snags or knots. But depending on the effect that I want I will sometimes use a stranded embroidery thread or a pearly cotton thread and it just gives a more primitive stitch and I'll come back to that. Now obviously dependent on the thread will also affect the needle. You can see I've got quite a large needle in here but it's just I, I would not get that thread through a small needle. Moving on some people prefer hoops. Now a quilting hoop is deeper than your standard embroidery hoop and I have an embroidery hoop here just to give you the idea. And I'll show you when we layer up in the quilting hoop, you do not want your fabric to be taut. So this is the embroidery hoop. This is no good for sewing, for quilting, sorry. The embroidery hoop is deeper. It's fundamentally the same and they come in a variety of sizes. This is quite a small one. You can get quite large round ones and oval shaped ones. You could also use the snap craft frames as well. Some people like to wear thimbles and there's a variety of different styles of thimbles this is just a little half thimble this is a leather thimble and the latest on the market are the silicon thimbles you can also have wraps which just look like an elastoplast that walk work, uh, work around your fingers and stop your fingers from getting any damage but again that is a personal preference when it comes to creating your design as you can see with this one here I have done a, a Celtic knot and I needed to use a marking pencil. I literally, before I laid it up, transferred the design. And there's a variety of marking pencils out there. You could use a Chacapel lead, which is a soft lead suitable for fabric and it will just wash off. There are also water erasable pens available on the market. Um, and you could also use a fine pencil. It again depends on what type of marking you are doing and what kind of thread, whether your thread is going to cover your markings. To mark it, I simply use either a ruler or as I say, I'll, I'll use a light box and transfer a design. And there's also the possibility to use the quarter inch marking tape, uh, it's a masking tape or even a washi tape would do. I'm going to very quickly show you how to hoop up your, your patchwork or your quilt. So your quilt consists of two rings. You have the outer ring which has the screw and the inner ring. What you need to do is to loosen the outer ring just to about the end of that screw and so you've got a lot of movement in there. You have a lot of thickness going in. The other hoop stays underneath 
and you pop your quilting on top. The rule of thumb is that you would start quilting in the centre of your project. So whilst this is a small project, I'm still going to start quilting in the centre here. Open up the hoop and pop it on top, very similar to an embroidery hoop. At that point, just do a couple of rotations of the screw. And then what you want to do is to loosen off that quilt inside the hoop. All will become clear soon. And you want it, unlike an embroidery, which is drum tight, to resemble the fact that if you have a cat, a cat's come along and sat on your quilt and made it a little bit saggy. Once you're happy with that, then you can tighten that up to secure it. One other little tip is when you are finished quilting, I like to remove the hoop because what I don't want to do is to leave a mark on my project. Okay, so I'm now ready to quilt and what I'm going to do is draw a quick diagonal line using a mark and pencil and the ruler and I'm just doing mine in a water soluble pen. It also means that you can see it very easily. I have my needle already threaded up and a little tip that I will give you is if you have a pack of needles I like to thread all my needles in one go and then pop them back into the packet because once you've started quilting the last thing you want to do is start to re-thread your needles. Do not have your quilting thread too long. The rule of thumb is from your hand up to your elbow and pop a knot in one end. Now the knot is not going to be shown on the back of the um, your work. So what you'll do is you'll start away. We're going to start, the, there's your starting point there. If I just put a little, a little mark there, that's where I want the needle to start and come up. So I've popped the needle in and it's only traveling through the top layer of the fabric and the wadding. It's not going through the back. And I'm going to pop it up through those layers. And I'm trying to do what I'm going to have to, go like that. And at this point, this is when your thimbles come into being. So this particular one I like using is a leather thimble and it has the silver uh, metal in there as well. So pop that up, allow the thread to travel through and when you get to the knot, we're not gonna leave it there on the top, we're going to pop it through. And hopefully you'll hear this. And that's popped through. So now we have a tail here and we'll have the starting point with the needle there. I'm going to do a little back stitch to secure it, but now the back stitch is going to go down. Now, can you notice when I was told many years ago how to quilt was to hold my needle at the eye of the needle and that will force the needle to go vertically because I want the needle to go all the way down to the underneath. So can you see the needles come from the top to the bottom? You're then going to use this finger to rock it back. So what we're doing is we're allowing the needle to travel back and you're using your finger. And this is where another thimble is really good to have in place um, because it'll protect your fingers. And you rock it back. And the back stitch, I'm going to bring this first back stitch up to exactly the same place. Just takes a few minutes to get that first stitch in and then ideally again to protect your fingers use a thimble to push it through. You can also have uh, things called needle grabbers which are small discs which will allow you to run it through. Now at this point this tail here we don't want to leave on the work so I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm going to cut it off at that point there. So that, that's us started off. So we're now going to do some quilting stitches. So again, remember when you're starting off, just hold the needle at the eye and it's going to force that needle down vertically. Remember, the needle is going to come through on the bottom and you're going to use that finger to rock it back up. If you're not happy, which I wasn't there, just bring it back up and then I'm just going to down and up. Now the length of the stitches, it doesn't matter. What you're trying to achieve is an even amount 
the, sorry, the sides of the stitches are even. You don't have to do what I've done and get several stitches on one needle if you only need to do one at a time, two at a time, you will build up your confidence. The direction that you're sewing in as well is entirely up to you. I personally like to quilt with my work coming towards me. So we'll just do another one, remember, down with the finger underneath, rock it back up. It's very difficult to show this on camera. Rock it back down. When you get to the size of the stitch, down, bring it back up. You can see the needle rocking back up there. And this is the reason why you need a smaller, a shorter needle, because a longer needle would bend. Bring the needle back to the size of the stitch that you're happy and go down and bring it back up. And if you're not happy with any of your stitches, of course, you can just take them out. Now, a couple of little tips I'm going to give you is if this was a larger quilt and I was working in a hoop or working in an area, I might have one needle start here. I might have another needle threaded going in a different direction. So I'm just working in that small area. Now, the other thing is if, for example, I hadn't run out of thread, but I'd finished my design and I wanted to be over in a completely different direction, do I need to stop quilting and, and tie it off? I tend not to. I make a slightly larger gap on that stitch and now I'm traveling my needle through the top of the fabric. I bring it out, take it around there, swivel it around so you can see I'm swiveling it around. Bring the eye of the needle through the fabric, swivel it around. You can travel for miles like this and then bring it around. We'll just take it over here to where you want. You haven't had to cut off your, your thread and you've traveled across. Now, when it comes to finishing, remember when we started, we didn't have a knot on the reverse. We don't want a knot on the back. So to finish, just do a small back stitch just to secure it. Make sure you're in the right place. Pop your thread back into the hole that it just came up with. Travel away, bring the needle up and then simply cut it off and you've got a nice finish with no knot on the back and we've achieved the quilting stitches on the back. Just a little tip if you're wanting to practice quilting, the pre-printed panels are ideal because you can do as much or as little stitching as you like. You can see here I have just outlined each of the printed pieces. So this is the, the right side on the wrong side of the fabric and again, when you're starting off, if your stitches aren't even, make a cushion because nobody will ever see the back. But if we turn this one through, then you can see all of those quilting stitches have come through. And the white on white is really a lovely effect. It's, it, it gives that whole cloth effect. I talked very early on about using an embroidery thread. Can you see the difference in the effect of the stitches? And also your choice of colour on your, your quilting is really important. When you're starting off, you may want to quilt with a, qu a, a cream on a cream, for example, or if you're quilting with the blue, keep the thread to match. And once you're happy, you can then start and use a contrast thread and make it more of a feature. As you can see, Vlieseline has a wide range of products, each with different properties and benefits for your projects. You can view the whole range on the Vlieseline website where you can download the brochure, which has detailed information on all of the products across our four categories. You can also join the conversation with us on our Facebook page, Creative Community Group and Instagram. All of the details are below.